There you go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. During the declared emergency in the City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and a provincial order limiting attendance at public gatherings. This will be a virtual public hearing and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer a phone or a tablet app or by telephone. All participants are automatically muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video. Any registered participants will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. For all those who are waiting online, Please ensure that you have called in with the phone number that you were originally registered with. If you call in with a different number, you will not be able to speak on the item. To ensure audio clarity, I also suggest that you refrain from using the speakerphone function on your telephones. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is, is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto was called to order. My name is Alan Smithies, and I will chair today's meeting. Joining us on the panel today are Ron Hunt, Asif Khan, Paul Kidd, and Nadini Sankar Peralta. City staff are also present, Daniel Antonacci, Brendan Clapp, and Jenny Kotas. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to property, permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the committee's decision on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal it to the Toronto Local Appeal Body or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. The hearing procedure is as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with their presentation if required. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, is given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you are reaching the five minute limit. When addressing the committee, please state clearly your name and address. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters described in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make a present to the presentation to the committee of the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. To ensure that a revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes, the committee may decide to defer the application if it is substantially revised. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application are invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have finished their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This marks the end of discussion on the item. The application is taken into committee for a decision. Are there any com committee members here this afternoon who have a conflict of interest they'd like to declare? There being none, okay, thank you. We will start off our this afternoon's agenda with item number 20, which is 10 Tarleton Road, 10 Tarleton Road. I have one person registered to speak. That is Mike de Oliveira. Are you there, sir? 
Mike de Oliveira, are you there? Hi. Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you, sir. I uh, just wanted to uh, pretty clear what you're asking for in the two variances that you have before us, one for floor space index, the other for uh, uh, an in the proposed stair location. I note that on your application, uh, the only conditions we have from staff relate to urban forestry. So I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or would like a presentation. Mr. Khan. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would ask the applicant uh, variance number one. Why do you need 0.79 floor space index? Sir, I heard, did you hear the question Mr. Khan was asking to justify your uh, request for the floor space index increase? Uh, yes, certainly. So this is an area that's experiencing a lot of growth. Um, we're proposing a new two-story home on the subject property at 10 Tarleton Road. The neighbors to the left currently have a three-story home that's on a similar size lot that is actually a larger GFA than ours. And there's many new homes being built in the area, including 317 Warren, that's to the rear of our property and also had permission from committee for uh, 0.82 floor space index, which is actually higher than what we're proposing. There's also other houses being built, such as 8 Tarleton, 12 Tarleton, and 22 Tarleton that are currently under construction and all have similar floor space index variances that they had received approvals for. So we try to limit our variances as much as possible here. That's why you see we don't have any soft landscaping variances. There's nothing for the building setback itself. So back variances is related to our stairs. Uh, we can talk about building length steps. So we really try to limit our variances here as much as possible. Unfortunately, we couldn't quite meet our work space index, but we have kept in line with the character of the neighborhood and Press four areas that have been allowed. But you have to realize that your drawing Z2 is allowing maximum 329.79 meters square. That's the maximum that you can have, and you already have the maximum. And 0.79 is too high. But, yes, we, we understand we're over the maximum, but we. As I've said, we've tried to keep in line with similar approvals the committee's granted in the past. The, and so I've mentioned 317 Warren that was approved for 0.81. It, it was a similar condition as this. They were building a new home there, similar size lots. So we've tried to keep in the character of the neighborhood. Uh, we're only going the 19% over the allowable here. There's other examples in the neighborhood that have been allowed for so 1.2, 1 1.9, 1 <clears throat> lots of examples on neighboring Avenue Road with 8.4, uh, Castlewood Road, many homes have 8.1 and above. So we really try to stay within the farm here for the neighborhood. Okay, thank you, sir. Any further questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? I've listened to what the agent has had to say, and I accept what he's saying. I also uh, couple that with uh, an extreme number of letters of support, which uh, I respect seeing, and I'll make this a motion to approve this application subject to forestry. Thank you very much, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that motion? Hunt seconds. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. Sir, your application has been approved subject to ur urban forestry yeah. conditions. Thank you very much. Have Thank a good you. day. Item number 21, 174 Ava Road. I have one person registered to speak. That is Drew Laszlo. Are you there? I am indeed. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I noticed that we, uh, you're the only person registered to speak on this item. The only comments we've received on your application from city staff are from urban forestry. Uh, the four variances you're asking for, I think the committee is very clear what you're requesting. I'll just ask if they have any questions or comments or would like a presentation. Committee? None? Oh, Mr. Khan? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
sir, uh, to the applicant, uh, would you be kind enough to explain variance number two? Again, this floor space index is very high. You are asking 0 0.0, 0 0.72, uh, which is way high than allowable. So please explain why you need that. Yes, uh, you heard that um, question, Mr. Laszlo. Uh, Mr. Khan wanted to know your justification for the, inc the proposed increase in the floor space index. I, yes, in this case, uh, I've been fortunate enough to work on um, a few houses in the area. This is, funny enough, lower or smaller as far as the FSI is concerned than, than most of the other applications uh, that typically get approved for the area. I, I believe the house, just based on the footprint of the house, it seems uh, reasonable to me. You know, as far as uh, how it fits on the property, I don't see it as being overdevelopment. Uh, based on the other variances, the resulting GFA just ends up having to be 72%. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to add, uh, I notice in the material we have on file that both your neighbors on either side are okay with the proposal. Uh, yes, we have one letter of support from the neighbor to the west, and then the neighbor to the east did not sign anything, but we met with them and they are fine with it. Okay, thank you. Any further questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, uh, you know, uh, just like the previous application, I accept the explanations provided today by the agent. I note the numbers of letters of support and zero letters of objection. Um, I'll motion to approve this application subject to forestry. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Mr. Hunt, are you in favor? Mr. Hunt's not there. Uh, I notice that Ms. Sankar or Mr. Kidd are in favor. Uh, Mr. Khan, are you in favor or opposed? Opposed. Mr. Khan dissenting. So your application. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Hunt had also, I heard him say he's in favor. Oh, he did. Okay, you heard him? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, sir, your application is, is approved. Subject to urban forestry con uh, conditions with Mr. Khan dissenting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 22, 453 McRoberts Avenue. I have three people registered to speak. Is uh, I have the agent, uh, Mr. Alex Boros. Are you there, sir? Mr. Boros, are you there? One more time, Mr. Alex Boros, are you there? Mr. Chairman, he did not register, so I don't know if he's online. What I'll if, do if is there's any forward. agents out there online ready to speak, if you do not register, we don't have you recorded, you may not get to speak. And the committee does have the right to proceed with the application. So in the future, if you're going to be representing anyone, please register. Mr. Boros, are you there? I'll go to the next item and come back. Mr. Chairman, like I said, he did not register. So if the committee wants to hear the opposition, we can, and then we can proceed with the application. Okay, I'll, fair enough. Okay, I'll go to the next. We have three people registered to speak on this item. Mr. Boros isn't there. I have Aniko Kazas. Are you there? I hope I pronounced that name correctly. Are you there? Uh, yes, Aniko it's Kazas. Oliver Kazas. Yes. Can I get your full name and address, please? Uh, the name is Aniko Kazaz, and the address is 459 McRoberts. We're the direct next door neighbor, even though there's uh, several sets of digits between. Okay, thank you, madam. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Yeah, in, in theory, we don't have a problem with there being a renovation of the property. It just, it feels excessively large for the lot size. So for our personal property, we would lose a lot of light and air space and view. So our main concerns are with point two, three, and eight, because it would cast a great deal of shadow on our backyard. And I do garden quite avidly, so I would lose a lot of sunlight. Um, we would lose light and view from our back windows, and we would basically lose the entire light that is coming in from uh, the window that would be closest to this wall that they're proposing to build just because of the height. 
Okay, madam, I, I just wanted to uh, let, let you know, you, you understand that a th there's nothing in the zoning bylaw that prohibits a three-story building and the height, the height variance isn't really, the, he's complies with the overall height requirement of the zoning bylaw. You understand that? Oh, okay, um, in points two, uh, on point two, it says the permitted maximum height of the front exterior main wall is 8.5, and they're proposing 10.2, so that's yes. what I was But the overall, the, yeah, the overall height of the building is is in compliance with the zoning bylaw. It's only with okay, respect it's, to it's, I just want Yeah, to, it's not to, my answer. I just want okay. to make sure that you're clear on that. Sure, yeah, I mean, again, I'm saying that we're not theoretically against a renovation there it's just in terms of the sheer size of the property on the lot um and the extent at which it goes back as well okay thank you uh and i'll just ask the committee does the committee have any questions of the speaker mr khan uh so miss gazet uh i have uh, my concerns about item number one but before you address the item number one i'll request you to explain various number nine and ten uh, various uh number nine. mr khan the the the, yes, the, the 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 lady who is speaking is not the applicant the agent hasn't registered uh so we're proceeding with his app his application oh, oh, the agent sorry, is sir, not here so the, okay so sorry about that mr chair I'm, no question for her okay thank no you. problem yeah thank you Okay, uh, we'll go to the next person on the street and on the uh, list, Amir Andala. Are you there, sir? Yes, I'm here. Can I get your full name and address, please, sir? Uh, yes, my name is Amir Andala, uh, 451 McRoberts, Sardinia, but we're just right on the south side of the, the house. <clears throat> if you could uh, please give us your thoughts on this application. Uh, definitely. Uh, the main issue we have is the discrepancy we found in the, the survey, which I attached to the email. Uh, there are two points that don't match with the survey that we have uh, uh, from uh, previous data that we did. So that's uh, the, the main concern. Uh, also on the variances, also I have uh, comments on number two, number three, uh, number four and five, and number nine. Uh, mainly, it's uh, very similar to, to the other comment. It's basically very excessive. Uh, we lose uh, the, a lot of view. Also, there are two extended decks in the, in the, in the yard that has a direct view on our property, which would raise a concern of privacy. Uh, the other uh, issue that we have with it is, is the excessive side in the side. So, if there is going to be digging, there will possibly in, in a situation which I had attach the picture that we will have overflowing over our basement windows very close to the line and uh the also the height which you addressed earlier that's another concern that we have okay thank you okay. does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker there being none i'll just go back and ask if the agent is there again mr alex boros are you there yes yes i am mr chair Okay, Mr. I'm Boros. sorry, I lost reception. Okay, Thank you have the opportunity you. to uh, make a present. You've heard you've heard some of the comments from the previous speakers. Yeah. So you have yes. the opportunity to combine your comments on that into a presentation to the committee, if you please. Yes, of course. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and committee. I lost reception. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is uh, an application for a new house. Uh, I'd like to also change items to number two which is concerning the height. I'd like to take, take it from 10.21 meters down to 10 on, meters, just please. Just a moment, sir. Of course. Just a moment. Yes, Variance of course. Variance number two, you're proposing it to change? Yes, from 10.21 to 10 meters. Okay, 10.21 to 10 meters, okay. Yes, please, and I'd like to delete items number six and seven. Six and seven deleted. Okay, those yes, two please. variances relate to the uh, architectural feature and its location to yes. the lot line. Okay. Yes, correct, Mr. Chair. So the uh, this particular application is located in the Rogers and Caledonia uh, York region. 
The house is uh, on top of, um, of McRoberts Street uh, north, uh, at the north end, so it's rel relatively isolated. Towards the rear, we have a very large cemetery, and uh, it, there's a laneway separating the uh, existing ho uh, house and uh, the cemetery itself. There is existing a, a double car garage in the rear. It's a narrow lot, roughly 20, 20 feet by 123 feet, uh, with proposed side yard setbacks of 0.45 and 0.45. Presently, uh, on the north side, it's 0.38, and it's 1.1 on the uh, south side. Um, the, the lot itself is uh, quite unique in the fact that uh, the front, all of the front yard, including the neighbors, is approximately three and a half feet above the uh, pr present sidewalk. So as such, uh, uh, most of it is raised up. In, in within that same uh, vein, uh, the, uh, that little uh, front uh, yard um, entrance into the basement would not be, uh, not be seen because of the fact that the front yard is set back. The third floor itself is, uh, is pushed back by almost uh, 12 feet. There is a, a, a new house that has been built virtually across the street uh, at 418 McRoberts. Uh, and again, it is similar in concept to what uh, we have both in terms of height and also in terms of FSI. Um, the, uh, the overall uh, GF, uh, GFA is, 20, is, a, is, is, a, is 2,200 square feet uh, spread, or, uh, spread, spread on the three floors. Um, there are also, um, in terms of the neighbor's comments, uh, if uh, shore, if shoring, uh, first of all, it, all the engineering will be done according to uh, city standards, and and this and the uh, side yards, uh, the south side yard setback would require or would have all engineering and shoring as may be necessary. In addition, um, obviously the all the drainage. Uh, is approved by uh, by city staff. So again, we would need to uh, to comply with all city uh, all city standards and build as such. Um, our our own our proposed house again is in terms of overall length is similar and or equal uh, to the existing house at four five one, which includes his deck. Uh, we have. I have the planning report, which again, which uh, has no objections, um, and we would comply obviously in terms of agreeing to uh, to uh, submit plans as uh, as as has been the same plans as has been uh, submitted. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay, thank you. We 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 have heard from the uh, we have heard from the uh, two residents who were re registered to speak. If I could, uh, if I could have a motion on the application, please, on the revised application. I just want to emphasize variance number two, which currently reads the proposed height of the front and rear exterior main walls is 10.21 meters has been changed from 10.21 meters to 10 meters and variances number six and seven which relate to the uh, proposed architectural feature which is a cornice being located from the north and south lot line both those variances have been deleted so we're dealing with the revised application if I could get a motion please Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, I feel the explanation uh, provided by the applicant, I find that satisfying. Um, I, I'd like to put forward a, a motion to accept the application uh, as revised. Um, uh, you, you've gone over the uh, revisions. Do, do I need to? Uh, no, you don't need to, Mr. Kidd. Yeah, I, I, okay. I, I, I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application uh, with the uh, noted uh, revisions. 
and uh, also subject to uh, forestry conditions and also uh, subject uh, to the uh, staff uh, planning uh, condition that the proposal be constructed <clears throat> substantially in accordance with the elevations uh, received by the Committee of Adjustment on June 8, uh, as it relates to the wall height and back of the third floor. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second Mr. Kidd's motion. Second, Hunt. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry and city planning conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. Thank you. Now on item number 2388 Balmoral Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That's the agent Hannah Rosemary Zayeda. Are you there, madam? Here. Yes. Can I get your full name and address, please? My name is Hannah Ziada at 88 Balmoral Avenue. Okay, thank you very much, madam. It's pretty clear what you're asking for in the two variances that we have before us. I notice that there are no, uh, no staff comments or conditions attached to this report. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or would like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. I will make a motion, Mr. Okay. Oh. Would uh, leave it to, to my colleague, Mr. Hunt, to give him an opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, on the basis that there is no, there have been no staff comments, and that uh, I note that there are two letters of support. I would uh, propose a motion to approve this application. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second that application, that, that motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. That motion carries. Your application is, uh, uh, Madam, your application has been approved uh, without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 24, 157 Gladstone Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That is a Alexandra Asaf. Are you there, madam? Ms. Asaf, are you there? Alexandra Asaf, are you there? We'll move on to the next, the next item. Item number 25, 132 Duplex Avenue. I have four people registered to speak. Uh, the agent is uh, Nicole Parr. Are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, madam, could I get your full name and address, please? Um, my name is Nicole Parr. I'm at 22 Blue Forest Drive. Toronto, Ontario, M3H4W2. Okay, thank you, madam. If I could, if you could please give the committee a uh, presentation on what you see are the merits of your proposal. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I just wanted to begin by saying that um, I did see the two letters of opposition in our file, and I did reach out to uh, both Jerry uh, uh, Gayuski and uh, Mr. Uh, McKellen. Um, with Mr. Uh, uh, Dajewski, he let me know basically over the phone that he wasn't so concerned with the height or anything like that, but the depth of the 17 meters really upset him. Um, but I would like to note to the committee that that is what is allowed for us to have in terms of depth according to the zoning bylaws. Um, and then I did speak with Mr. David um, um, Mecklem. Um, I sent him an email. I haven't had a response yet, so I will hear from him, I'm sure, as one of the speakers today. Uh, but we did try to reach out to the people that opposed and uh, try to, you know, at least understand where our position is. Our, posi our position is such that in terms of the building height, um, with the 30 centimeters over, which is pretty much one foot or just a little bit under. The property at 186 duplex uh, was approved with a height of 
um, one, two. So there's a similarity there in the neighborhood. Um, and then I wanted to talk about, uh, so that's there was the North York bylaw and the citywide bylaw that both triggered the height variance um, as well. Um, I think one of the, it seems to be one of the most concerning for, for the neighbors is the, is the um, front exterior main walls. Um, the reason that we uh, are asking for 8.64 in terms of those is to have adequate windows for our bedrooms. Um, if you see the uh, floor plans for this house, you have uh, bedrooms on the front of the property and bedrooms on the side of the property. Uh, the ones on the back are where the master bedroom is, so we tried to give that enough light and, and, and to make that as spacious as possible because the house is quite thin. And then in terms of the front, uh, it's two bedrooms as well. In total, this uh, house has four bedrooms, so it would be for the, the couple themselves, and they have two children, ages nine uh, and eight, um, and they are looking to have a third child. So for them, this is really the bare minimum of the house that they that they need. Um, I also wanted to note for the for the FSI, um, the bylaw asks for six uh, point six, um, but there was a house one ninety duplex that was approved at zero point six seven two. Um, we are a little bit above that, but again, it's that requirement to have adequate bedrooms for uh, for the size of a growing family. And um, yeah, I mean, other than that, I don't have too many comments. Um, I just wanted to note that if we were to follow the bylaws in terms of the exterior main wall height being seven, uh, the windows that we could provide are literally the bare minimum of what the OBC requires to have in a bedroom um, of that size. So, and I think the style of house and these windows are something that's really prevalent in, in the Toronto area and the North York area. And, and, you know, it's a style that's coming up more and more. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's basically it for me. Okay, thank you, madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll move on to the next uh, person registered to speak. I have a Julie Rosenthal, are you there? Ms. Rosenthal, are you there? Yes, sir, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can I get your uh, thoughts on this application, please? And I, can I get your full sure. name and address? Yes, my full name is Julie Rosenthal. I live at 63 Eastbourne Avenue, so in the neighborhood, and I'm speaking on behalf of the neighbors who live immediately to the north of the property, uh, Heather and Greg Harris. Okay, thank you. Please proceed. So my submission is that this proposal does not respect and reinforce the physical characteristic of the neighborhood. Um, it seeks a group of variances, and I would emphasize to the committee that the variances need to be considered in their totality, not, um, not um, isolated one at a time. And so what I say is it seeks a group of variances that is wholly out of keeping with the surrounding homes on the block. And here I wanna underline that Ms. Parr, while she talked about houses uh, on duplex, they are not houses on this block because on this block, there are no houses uh, where variances have been granted that are anywhere close to what is being sought. But regardless of that, and in addition to that, this group of variances is wholly out of keeping with the neighborhood as a, as a whole. And I would underline that both neighbors to the north and south are in opposition, and I haven't seen any letters of support. So with respect to the immediate context, as I stated, there is simply no precedent on this block of duplex for anything like this group of variances. And even in the broader neighborhood, um, Ms. Parr took you to an example of a 0.672 square, uh, square, floor in, or square foot index. Um, first of all, that's smaller than what is sought here. She says, well, it's not much of a difference, but of course, as the committee knows, um, each incremental addition or incremental increase sets a new precedent. Um, and while there are instances in the broader neighborhood of a 0.69 uh, density. Those are on very different streets on much larger lots uh, than what we have here. And what I wanna underline 
is even in those instances, even where the 0.69 density was permitted, in none of those cases was the kind of exterior wall height variance that's anywhere close to what is being sought here approved. And what I want to underline is this is a 25% increase over the permitted exterior wall height. And this is going to have a significant adverse effect um, on the neighbors. I note that the Harrises who live to the north of this property have a pool. This exterior wall height is going to, to create really a looming overlook into their backyard, into their pool. The way that this proposal seeks to deploy that density with these enormously tall walls um, simply has no precedent in the neighborhood and will create um, it really a, a significant adverse effect on the neighbors. So what I say is that this proposal does not respect and reinforce the physical character of the neighborhood. There is no precedent uh, for this kind of, of a group of variances being granted. It would set, um, I say, a highly undesirable and significant precedent for the neighborhood that does not respect uh, the intent of the zoning bylaws or the official plan. Thank you, Madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll move on to our next speaker. I have a Mr. E.J. Leslie. Are you there? E.J. Leslie, are you there? Okay, Mr. Leslie is not there. Go to our next speaker. Uh, Mr. David Macklem, are you there, sir? Here, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, David Macklem, M-A-C-K-L-E-M, -E 130 Duplex Avenue, Toronto. I am the, uh, we occupy the house to the south. I don't have much more to add than what Julie said, but I do want to say that uh, we look forward to having a new house built on that property. It's been pretty run down. However, the size of it and the and the exterior main walls being 25 almost 25 percent above the uh, the limits are concerning to us. Uh, we're afraid that um, our house is going to be towered over by this uh, house built next door as proposed. Okay, sir. I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to add. You realize that. There's a variance for main wall height, but there's no variance required for the overall height of the building. The overall height of the building as shown on the plan submitted to the committee are in compliance with the zoning bylaw. Well, the maximum permitted building height is 9.0 according to the bylaw, and the proposed building height, at least in the minutes that was sent out, oh, is 9.3. I mean, I realize, I realize that's only a foot, so it's not that doesn't really concern me. It's more the exterior main walls being 8.64 meters when the, when the, the bylaw says seven. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go back to the uh, agent. Uh, Nicole Parr, are you there? I am. Uh, I you've am. Heard, you've heard the comments from the previous speakers. If you'd like to respond. I, uh, for me, I think it's a matter of numbers. I think especially when it comes to variance number two and variance number three that both have to do the with the front and the rear exterior and main walls. Um, I would wager to say that um, it's hard for the community to understand what those variances are. And I see that that's, that's one of their main concerns. Um, I, I obviously would not want to, you know, come in here with a refusal. Um, I'm willing to, my clients are willing to work with the neighbors, but um, yeah, I think maybe we would request a deferral at this time, if that's possible, Mr. Chairman, and to, to and that, that, maybe that's, work that's, with them in some possible way. Uh, we can do that. I wish you had asked that at the beginning. Um, I have a motion before us um, now. To, I have to go back and ask the. Uh, no, you are you asking for a deferral, madam? Uh, 
Ms. Parr, are you asking uh, yeah, for a I, deferral? Yeah, 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 sorry, sorry, sir. I'm just, I'm just thinking for one second. Um, yeah, I think I'm asking for a deferral. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Then let's go into committee and ask the members for is, a motion. Or is there a possible, is there a possibility to hear from the committee and what their thoughts are? No, I'm not sorry. now. You, we've all, it, you, if you want to ask for a deferral, you have to ask the committee for a for a for that motion that you want to defer the application for the purposes of consulting with the neighborhood. Is that what you would like to do? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's fine. And I'll ask the committee if they, if they would like uh, how they would uh, like to vote on a motion of a deferral. If one of them would like to make that motion. Uh, committee, uh, we, we, Mr. Chair, the members do not have to make a motion for deferral. Now that we've heard the application. Call the item into committee, and the members can make a motion either to approve, refuse, or defer. Okay. Thank you for that clarification, Mr. Secretary Treasurer. If I could, Madam, if you want to wrap up your presentation, and then I'll ask the committee for a motion. Mr. Chair, Ms. Sankar is asking, raising her hand, she to speak. Ms. Sankar? No, Mr. Chair, if she wants to complete her presentation yes. i'm ready for a motion yeah that's that's what it's sure. going to be madam if you want to finish your presentation your rebuttal yeah definitely i i really do respect everything the neighbors are saying i i just do feel that when it comes to a a, a house this size which is under 3000 square feet trying to have a family of four and possibly five you know, with washrooms being shared, stackable laundry. I just don't think that we're asking for anything that's obscene in any way. We're, we're following the 17 meters in terms of depth. You know, uh, it's less than one foot when it comes to height. I respect the neighbors, their concern over the 8.64, but it is my belief that I don't think the neighbors fully understand what that means. And I, I, yes, I, you know, for me, it's a growing family and I, I think that this neighborhood very slowly is going to start seeing a lot of changes and um, yeah, sometimes that can be a little bit shocking, but I think that's the nature of the city of Toronto is that we're getting, um, we're getting new buildings, we're getting new styles and I think that's just the nature of building, but um, I, you know, I, I did try to reach out to the two neighbors that I, I, I saw the letters of opposition from. It was always my, our intention, not just mine, my clients to, to try to explain and to, um, you know, but um, it is what it is. So thank you very much for your consideration. And, and I hope that you understand where we're coming from, my client and I. Thank you. Uh, if I could get a uh, motion on this application, please. Please note that there are no. Please note that. Mr. Khan, there's something wrong with your speakers. Every time you speak, there's a big hissing sound. Can you mute yourself? Hello. Okay. Thank you. Could I get a. Uh, just to note that there are no comments or conditions recommended by staff. If I could get a motion on this application, Ms. Sankar. Yeah, sure, Mr. Chair, I think that, uh, you know, in hearing both uh, sides and, and sort of what the neighbors are saying, but then also uh, looking at this application really objectively, you know, I think it's minor in my view. Um, and so for that reason, I'm going to motion to approve uh, this application. Okay, As thank is. you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Yes. Mr. Hunt, are you in favor? Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. That motion carries unanimously, Ms. Parr. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you. I very much thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. We'll go back to our previous application, item number 24. 157 Gladstone. Uh, is the agent there? Alexandra Asaf, are you there? Alexandra Asaf, are you there? Mr. Chair, they are present. However, their audio is not working. Okay, I'll go. I'll move on. We'll come back to it. 
Item number 26, 319 Perth Avenue. I have one person registered to speak, and Alex Perez, are you there, sir? Uh, Mr. Perez, hello? are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Mr. Perez, we can't hear you. Uh, I'm here, can you hear me? Barely. We can hardly hear you. Okay, hold on for a second. Um, Sir, we can't hear you. Hello, can you? That's better. Can you hear me now? Yep, perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, now, uh, sir, thank you very uh, much. Uh, do you have one variance before us? Uh, it's related to the uh, floor area of an, the ancillary garage. Uh, we, I note yes. that there's no comments from staff or re recommended conditions, and we have no one else registered to speak. I'll ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or would like a presentation. I have a question. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Alice, would you be kind enough to explain why you need 58.8 .8 meter square area for your ancillary structure? Yes, uh, sir, I think you heard that Mr. Khan was looking for uh, a justification for your variance, your increase in the floor area for the ancillary building. Uh, yes. Um, so the the lot size is is twenty five feet wide. So we are leaving one foot on each side as a setback as required. So we have a garage of twenty three feet wide. And in terms of the depth, we are going. Uh, we are proposing twenty seven feet. I think to park a car comfortably, you need around twenty two feet. You know, so you can walk in the rear of the car, you can walk in the front of the car. And we are leaving about four feet more uh, because my um, client may, they may want to start a, start a bicycle, maybe some gardening equipment. So they are allowing a bit of a space in there, plus the wall thicknesses, which is about 12 inches on on both sides. So that, that, that brings us to 27 feet. Uh, which is currently where currently we have the fence because right now they have a parking pad with a fence to the other side of the property. So, and it has been working very well. The landscape is done in that area. We're not going to touch it. So that's why we are proposing this garage uh, 23 by 27, which gives us uh, 58 square meters, which is 621 square feet. Okay, thank you, sir. Any further questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd? Um, in my view, the requested uh, variances are minor. I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application uh, without conditions. Right, apologies, Mr. Kidd, you're, move, uh, you're moving approval of the application? Uh, without, uh, with no uh, uh, conditions. Okay, uh, someone to second that motion? Hunt. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you, sir. I'll go back to uh, item number 24, 157 Gladstone Avenue. Is the agent there? Alexandra Asaf, are you there? Alexandra Asaf, are you there? Okay. Move ahead to item number 27, 26 Rogers Road. I have one person registered to speak. That is a David Marks. Mr. Marks, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, Mr. Marks, I wanted to ask if you've had the opportunity to read the Transportation Services Report of the 30th of October. They indicated that they had no objections to your application, provided that the uh, existing access that is no longer required is removed and restored to soft landscaping and the curb cut replaced with a full curb. Have you read that report? 
Yes, I have. I, that was their conclusion. Okay, thank you. Uh, you have one variance before us. I'll just ask the committee uh, if it has any questions or comments. Again, I, I know it's related to a parking variance that uh, Transportation Services has no objection to, so I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, I, I do believe that this is, uh, it meets the four tests. I'm going to motion to approve this application. Um, it will be subject to the uh, condition uh, provided by the October 30th transportation re report, whereby the existing access um, must be removed and restored to soft landscaping. Um, and the curb cut replaced with a full curb. curb. And the curb. Yeah. Okay. So, sure. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Uh, someone to second Ms. Ms. Sankar's motion? Hunt seconds. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved, subject to uh, transportation services condition. Chairman and committee members. Thank you. Item number 28, 476 Atlas Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. And I note that we have uh, no comments or conditions recommended by staff. We have four variances before us. I think it's pretty clear uh, what the applicant is asking for. I'll just ask uh, the agent, uh, Stephen Kirschenblatt. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, sir. It's pretty clear what uh, you're asking for in the, in the four variances before us. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or it would uh, like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? I oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kahn. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. These are minor uh, uh, variances, all four of them. Therefore, I will move that it has met the zoning bylaws by 69 2013 and it should be approved. I'm sorry, Mr. Kahn, what's it, what is the question? Is it relating to the floor space index? <laughs> no, no, sir. I'm moving it to be approved. The which? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Khan. My mistake. Okay, I have a motion to approve by uh, Mr. Khan. Someone to second that motion? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Mr. Hunter, you in favor? In favor. Okay, thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you. Item number 29. 11 Campbell Crescent. I have one person registered to speak, uh, David Lang. Are you there, sir? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, sir, I just wanted to ask, uh, we have no comments from city staff regarding this application. There was a report from the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority dated the 9th of November indicating they had no objection to your application, but I just wanted to mention that they warned of an existing violation regarding an apparently unauthorized construction of a Gabian wall. Are you aware of that? Yes, we are. Okay, as long as you're aware of it, uh, just make sure you follow up with them. Uh, it's Thank pretty you. It's pretty clear what you're asking for. You have the one variance before us. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or would like a presentation. Mr. Chair, I would like to uh, thank you, sir. Uh, would you be good enough to explain why you need such a large balcony area, 32.19 meters square? Sir, can you give uh, us, uh, uh, provide a justification for your uh, recommended variance? Yeah, so the, uh, the house was built a number of years ago. There was a flat roof on the center of the back of the house and in the approved building permit drawings, that area was the proposed balcony. Uh, but for some reason, and this was again several years ago, the contractor extended the balcony across over the other flat roof area that was 
on the left side of the house. And it's been like that for a number of years. And there's now a new owner who is being faced with the challenge of a permit that wasn't closed because the balcony was built as such. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, did you get your answer, the question answered, Mr. Khan? Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, if I could get a, if there's no other questions of the speaker, if I could get a motion on this application, please. Can I make a motion? Mr. Khan? Thank you, sir. Well, uh, after listening uh, to, to the explanation, I think it's a minor variation, var uh, variance, so it should be approved. Thank you. Uh, some in the second Mr. Khan's motion. Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Mr. Hunter, are you in, in favor? favor? Okay. Mr. In favor. In favor. That motion carries, sir. Your application's been uh, approved without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Item number 30, 266 Lawrence Avenue East. I have one person registered to speak. That is a Jerry Paluskowitz. I hope I pronounced that cor correctly. Are you there, sir? Yes, I'm here. Yes, sir, could I get your full name and address, please? Uh, Jerry Paluskiewicz, uh, 80 Crescent Road, uh, Toronto, Ontario, M4W1T5. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to, know, uh, to note that uh, there are no recommended uh, staff conditions and no comments from city staff. Uh, pre pretty clear what you're asking for in the five variances before us. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or would like a presentation. There being none, if I, Mr. Khan. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have to ask variance number four and number five to be explained. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Khan would ask for some justification specifically with respect to variance number five. Uh, uh, number five, uh, it's a secondary suite. Uh, my client wants to live uh, with uh, with his daughter there, so his daughter is moving into the house. So they will pro they would like to provide second kitchen and uh, and uh, sort of separate accommodations for her. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Khan. Did you get your question answered? <laughs> Okay, thank you. Any further questions of the speaker? There being none, uh, no, no other persons registered to speak. If I could get a motion on this application, please. Ms. Sankar? Through you, Mr. Chair, I do believe that this is minor in nature and does meet the four tests. I'll motion to approve this application as is. Thank you. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Kidd second. Second. Uh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Con, um, Mr. Con dissenting. Sir, your application has been approved uh, without condition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 31, 2135 Shepherd Avenue East and 325 Yorkland Boulevard. I have one person registered to speak, a Jeff Solly. Are you there, sir? I am here, sir. Yes, yes I thank am. Thank you very much. I note that there's a, a variance here with respect, one variance regarding to an increase in the number of stories on the building. I'll just ask the committee if, it, uh, just to note that there are no staff comments or conditions on this application. Does the committee have any uh, questions or comments or would it like a presentation? That being the, uh, Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. J just so uh, I'm clear on uh, the, uh, the application, uh, uh, the, uh, is, it, is it correct that you're not changing the height of the building at all? It, it's strictly a question of uh, whether or not the mezzanine level is uh, included in the number of stories? That's correct. There is no change to the building height. I would call it a labeling uh, matter. Um, we're going to label the mezzanine as a story. Yeah, and and you're not you're not uh, increasing the uh, number of units. Correct. Okay. Thank no you. increase. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, no further questions. If I could get a motion on this application, Mr. Khan. 
Sir, I have a question, if you may allow. Mr. Khan? Sir, I have a question to ask, not the motion to move. Okay, well, okay, please proceed. Thank you kindly. Sir, I would like the applicant, what exactly your variance means? The uh, variance is requested as a result of an interpretation of uh, whether a mezzanine is a story or not. Uh, within the townhouse units, which are on the main floor or ground floor of the building, uh, there is a mezzanine proposed within the unit. Uh, the zoning uh, department has deemed the mezzanine level as a story. Um, so whereas we had assumed that the second story would begin above the townhouse unit and proceeding to three, four, and five, and so on and so <laughs> forth, the zoning department has said, no, the second story begins at the mezzanine, which is within the townhouse. Um, so that has precipitated the variance application. Uh, as I said, um, in a view, it would be helpful for the community to review uh, the plans, uh, specifically the uh, uh, the cross section that's that has uh, was submitted with the application package. Um, we are, are uh, essentially relabeling the mezzanine lay level as floor two and then floor two gets relabeled to floor three and so on and so forth. Uh, so in, in essence, there is no change to the building height, no change to the building mass, no change to the number of units. Sir, I do understand what you are saying, but my question is that in both fields, somewhere it is mentioned that you cannot have more than 1,100 units. Now, my question to you, sir, is how many units will you add in this mezzanine, through this mezzanine, to building A and building B? No additional units will be added. The mezzanine okay. is, is within the existing unit, and we're not proposing any change uh, to the unit. Thank you very much. You, you answered my question. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, any further questions of the speaker? If I could get a motion on this application, please. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Hunt. I like, yes, I would like to uh, move the uh, approval of this based on the uh, the explanation by the applicant as to why this change is necessary uh, and that there will not be any change other than numbering of the floors. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hunt. Can I get someone to second Mr. Hunt's motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 32, 101 to 105 Brisbane Road. I have uh, one person registered to speak, a Sarah Clark. Are you there, madam? Hello, madam, are you there? Ms. Clark? Sarah Clark? Seems Ms. Clark is not there. We'll come back to that application. There's two we're on, have on hold now. Actually, item number 33 is the same, 99 Brisbane Road. Sarah Clark, are you there? Hi, Mr. Chair. Yes, I am here. Okay, thank you, Ms. Clark. I wanted to ask uh, on both these applications, there, there's a comment from Transportation Services dated the 10th of November. They would like a deferral so that you could provide a, a parking and load, a, a loading and parking demand study. Do you want to defer the application to provide that study? Hi, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, yes, we do acknowledge the comments put forward by the Transportation Department. Um, we also thank them for their review. However, we would like the opportunity to speak to and potentially resolve these matters today. Okay, well, well let's, let's just put that out there. Do you want to defer the application to provide that study or do you want the committee to deal with your application today? We would like to deal with the application today. However, in the event that the committee 
doesn't feel like they can grant an approval, we will accept a deferral to discuss. Well, yeah, that well it's, 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 it's either or. You either want to defer it to provide the study or you want the committee to deal with the applications today. We can deal with both these applications, 99 and 105, because they're effectively the same, uh, the they same address. Or they're side by side. So it's your call. If you want to defer the application, then you have to request that deferral. I understood, sir, and I and I respect the um, the authority of the committee and the proceeding. However, is there an opportunity for me to give my presentation? And if the committee does need further information, then we can accept the deferral. Well, it's it's a it, it's a real gamble. The committee doesn't want to keep deferring applications, so uh, you know we we can hear your presentation, and uh, I guess if we feel it has merit, we can vote on it. But if you, uh, that's entirely up to you. It's your call. That's the risk you're um, taking. I I would appreciate the opportunity to present, and as said, if there is merit, then we will um, take the deferral if the committee doesn't feel like they can give an approval today. Okay, well, thank then. Mr. Then Chair, I don't think she understands very well that we could, after hearing the application, we could say no. Exactly. There, this is not I, about either we approve or defer. It is a no or a yes. So you, or as, you can request a deferral. As Ms. Sankar said, Madam, uh, it's, it's at your risk. So if you want to proceed, you can please go ahead. Okay, uh, on that basis, sir, and thank you, Ms. Sankar, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, we will request a deferral in that instance then. And that's on both, that's both on, um, 101 to 105 Brisbane and 99 Brisbane Road. Yes, that would be for both applications. Okay, thank you. So I have uh, I have a request from the applicant committee to uh, defer the both applications, uh, 99 Brisbane Road and 101 to 105 Brisbane Road for the purposes of uh, meeting with transportation services and providing a parking and loading study. Ms. Sankar? Yes, Mr. Chair, through you, I'll put forward a motion to defer this application sine die to give the applicant a chance to uh, favorably work this out with transportation. I think that's a good idea. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion. Mr. Khan, second. Yeah, Mr. Khan, second. All those in all those in favor. Mr. Khan, are you in favor? In favor. Okay, thank you. Madam, you're at, both applications have been deferred sine die so that you can meet with transportation services and provide that uh, parking and loading data that they're looking for. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members Thank of the you. committee. Item number 34, 658 Bedford Park Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That is an agent. Sanazi Nuri, are you there? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm here. Yes, thank you very much, Madam. Uh, could I get your full name and address, please? Uh, yes, my name is Sanaz Nuri, and I'm the agent representing this um, uh, project on behalf of the owner. Okay, and thank you, Madam. I, just, I note that we have no uh, comments or recommended conditions from city staff, and we have no other persons registered to speak on this application. You have five variances before us. It's pretty clear what you're asking for. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or would like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Oh, Mr. Khan, do you have a question? Uh, no, sir, uh, motion. Okay, a motion, Mr. Khan. Sir, these are minor uh, variances. Therefore, I would like to move the application be approved. Well, thank you, Mr. Khan. Someone to second Mr. Khan's motion to approve? Second. Kid seconds. All those in favor? Mr. Hunt, are you in favor? Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. That motion carries unanimously. Uh, your application's been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members thank of you. the committee. Item number 35, 117 Dollish Avenue. 
I have two people registered to speak. I have James Pfeffer, who is the agent. Are you there, sir? Mr. Pfeffer? James Pfeffer, are you there? Come back, Mr. One more time. James Pfeffer, are you there? 117 Dollish Avenue. No, we'll come back to him. Go to item number 36, 61 McAdam Avenue. I have two people registered to speak. I have, and I don't want to try and pronounce that name without messing it up. The last name is Atri, A-T-R-I. Are you there? Yes. Can I get your full name and address, please? Um, Nilufar Atri. And, and the address is 28 Arthur Wood Street, Aurora, Ontario, L4J 768. Okay. Thank you, madam. Uh, I wanted to ask, have you had the opportunity to read the city planning report of the 27th of October? They indicate that they had no objection, provided that the uh, property is developed substantially in accordance with the west and east side elevation drawings submitted to the committee and attached as attachments one and two to their report. Have you had the opportunity to read the city planning report? Ms. Atri? Uh, yes, I actually, uh, there, Ms., Ms., Mr. Bill is here to, uh, if you. Um, Ms. Atri, it's hard to hear does you. He wants to present. Hello, do you have my, my voice? It's hard to hear you, Hello? madam. Do you have any other audio devices on? Um, no, it's just a computer. Yeah, turn off your speakerphone. Just you speak into the phone normally. Now? Okay, thank you. Uh, if you could give us a presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal, madam. Ms. Atri, are Hello? you there? Yes. Do can you, you give me? us a, uh, can you give the committee a presentation on what you see are the merits of your proposal? Yes, if you let me, I have Mr. Bill here. Uh, he wants to present it uh, on behalf of me. Go ahead, madam, please. Ms. Atri, are you there? Hello. Ms. Atri, we've lost you. Are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, you keep fading in and out. Okay, can you can oh, you give the committee a uh, present? Can you give the committee a presentation, please? Um, yes. Uh... Speaking on behalf of the architect here. Okay. Can you hello. Hear me all right. Who uh, can you can you identify yourself? Who are you? I'm, my name is Bill Ross, and I'm acting on I'm acting on behalf of the architect here. Okay, can I get your full name and address then, please? Yep. Number nine, Eswick Lane, Uxbridge, Ontario, L9P1G4. Okay, can you please give us a presentation on what you see are the merits of your proposal? Yes, we're asking for uh, reduced side yards a little bit, which is uh, what's in, it's basically what's in the neighborhood. And we're asking for a height on the exterior side main wall of uh, 10 meters by the bylaw permit 7.5. And also the building heights of 8.8 .8 or 9, for me, 8.95 where 8.8 .8 is permitted. The, as far as the, the heights goes, or the, uh, it's under the old bylaw, it's measured from the center of the road and uh, there's a slight difference in grade elevation. It's only, we're looking at six inches, but we comply with the 10 meters uh, overall building height. The question here, I guess, is, is item number three. And if you look to the side elevation of the building, you'll see that the 
eave is at 7.5 meters. And it's just a section of about two feet thick. It runs up the front to support the front wall. And that's at variance. And if in the staff comments from the staff report, it says the 10 meter height variance applies only to a small portion of the side elevations. The heights of the rest of the side exterior main walls comply with bylaw requirements. In order to ensure the increased height, the side exterior main walls remains as proposed. Drawing submitted staff recommend that approval uh, committee include the condition that it be developed according to this two side elevations. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go to the, uh, our next registered speaker. I have a Silvana Agresti. Are you there, madam? Ms. Agresti? Yes, I am. Can I get your full yes, name and address, you. please? It's Silvana Agresti, 59 McAdam Avenue, Toronto. I'm on the east side of the new build. Okay, thank you, madam. If you could give us the uh, your thoughts on the application. Uh, just wanted to preference, it is a very old neighborhood, very um, with the physical characteristics of a neighborhood, a number of bungalows on the street. The house that uh, currently living in was built in 1930. A lot of the um, homes on the street were built in the early 1900s. My house is approximately a thousand square feet and um, with an elderly couple living in the house. Uh, we enjoy the fresh air the, and the space between the houses and sitting in the back on the porch with the view. We feel that this new build encroaches on our property. There is going to be uh, a lack of airflow. We lose light. Uh, the increase in the wall height is an issue. Also, the uh, east side yard setback will be an issue for us. Uh, in addition, the neighborhood is already seeing uh, a lot of traffic flow from Dufferin Street, Yorkdale Mall. It's an industrial area with the school up the street. Uh, the build uh, would have a, an impact uh, on our property. We feel that it's too close to our property line and there's an adverse effect. Uh, and also, um, we feel that the, the the, the construction uh, will uh, impact our uh, value of the home. Uh, it's a small bungalow that we're living in, and we'd like to uh, uh, get some more information why uh, the variance is occurring um, outside of uh, the uh, zoning bylaw. We would also like to see um, some statistics from other builds on the streets to support the variances and a construction management plan uh, should be shared with the neighbors. Okay, thank you, madam. Does the com committee have any questions of the speaker? I'll go back to the uh, applicant. Are you there? Yes, sir. You've heard the comments from Ms. Agresti, if you'd like to address them. Yes, as far as the side yard set. Are you there? Can you hear me? Can you address those the comments from Ms. Agresti, please? Yes. Can you hear me all right? Yes, please proceed. Okay. The side yard variance that we're asking for. Uh, is actually wider than what the neighbors have at the back of their property. It's, it narrows down there. They're, they're at number 59. And we step, the, the building as it is, steps back a little bit at that point. So we're five feet away from the property line there. Uh, as far as the height goes, the heights of the building complies with the bylaw. Overall height complies with the bylaw. The length complies with the bylaw. The coverage complies with the bylaw. Uh, the only thing we're asking for is a slight reduction in the side in the side yards and it's compatible with if those side yards are compatible with what's in the neighborhood um, uh, the heights that we're talking about is for the sidewall at the main at, at 
basically at the main front wall. If you, if you look to the side elevation, it's about a two foot strip that runs up to support the, the facade of the front of the building. And staff has no objection. Staff has no objection to the side yards or, or, any, or anything else other than to make sure that the side elevations are being constructed in accordance with the elevations that are provided. Okay, thank you, sir. Any uh, questions of the speaker? If I could get a motion on this application, please. Mr. Kidd. Hey, Mr. Chair, uh, I do accept the explanation uh, provided by the applicant. Um, I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the uh, um, accept the proposal um, subject to the uh, uh, condition in the staff report uh, dated October 27th that the property be developed substantially in accordance with the west and east side elevation drawings submitted to the committee of adjustment and attached as attachment one and two to the staff report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kidd. Could I get someone to second Mr. Kidd's motion? Mr. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? In favor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hunt. Sir, your motion carries unanimously subject to city planning conditions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'm just going to go back to item number 24, 157 Gladstone Avenue. Is Alexandra Asaf there? Yes, I am here. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can Hello? hear you, madam. Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to go Still back to, it's 157 Gladstone Avenue. Uh, I'm just going to ask, we have, you're the only person registered to speak on this item. Yeah. I note that there are no uh, staff comments or conditions on the application. We have no other people registered to speak. I think what you're asking for in the five variants is pretty clear. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or would like a presentation. Being that, could I get a motion, please? Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, I would move that uh, this application be uh, approved as presented. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second Mr. Hunt's motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Khan dissenting. Uh, Madam, your application is approved uh, without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's go to one of our other deferred items. That is it's item thirty-five. I'm looking, Mr. James Pfeffer, are you there? Yes, I am here. Can you hear me now? Yes, I hear you now. Just a moment. Let me find. Uh... Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, item number 35, uh, the deputy, Mr. Fulgraf, is not present. So just FYI. Item number 35? Correct. Th okay, hang on. We just. Mr. Fulgraf is not there? Correct. Well, thank you, Brandon. <clears throat> Item number 35, my apologies, committee. Uh, Mr. Pfeffer, you're there? I am here. Can you hear oh, me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. I wanted to uh, ask you, there is a very uh, lengthy report from city planning dated the 12th of November. Have you had the opportunity to read it? They were recommending the modifications to the application, but I'm going to skip, I just want to skip that for a sec. 
they had indicated that uh, they also wanted, in addition to some modifications, they wanted another modification, which was to reduce the floor space index from 0 0.62 to below 0 0.55 times the area of the lot. Does this particular recommendation effectively scuttle your current application? Uh, no, it does not, and we'd like to speak to that request okay, I'm, there okay. of planning. I'm, I'm going to, uh, if you could, the report is, the recommended conditions are very lengthy, and if the committee would bear with me, I'll go through them. Uh, city planning, their 12th November report, wanted uh, variance number six regarding a third-story platform eliminated, wanted variance number seven regarding the west side yard setback. Um, they wanted that increased. They wanted variance number eight regarding the east yard side yard setback. They wanted that increased. They wanted to eliminate variances number nine, 10, and 11. Uh, they wanted to reduce variance number 12 regarding the building height. And then, of course, uh, they wanted the uh, FSI reduced from 0 0.62 to 0.55. Then they were uh, indicating that uh, should the committee choose to approve the revised application, city planning staff recommend that the dwelling have a maximum length of 20.69 meters in addition to a rear excavated ground floor platform for a total building length of 25.3 meters. And it goes on, to be honest, these are a very lengthy set of conditions. Sir, have you had the opportunity to read this report? Oh, I certainly have, and I talked about this pretty extensively with the planner before she wrote it. So, so the conditions, I mean, there's a number of them, but I really think um, they're, they're pretty minor. I think they're just kind of shrink wrapping the proposal that the committee sees before you. And the committee does have revised plans, which actually reflect all of those changes. Okay, One, now, two, five have already been. Okay, but, but before you start on those, before you start on those recommended modifications, did you see the transportation services report of November 12th? I certainly did. And basically they say they're fine with the driveway we have. They just want to make sure that the sidewalk remains sidewalk. Well, they did. Of, uh, it, they were or, mentioning. Or I'm aware. Have you, have you read that report? I certainly have. I've got it right in front okay, of me. Okay, because they're making reference to some interlocking stone pavers in the Dawlish Avenue Boulevard that they want you to maintain in a state of good repair. Uh, the existing sidewalk must be resurfaced with concrete. Interlocking stone surface must be removed with the site plan revised accordingly. And a notation included in the site plan drawing stated, the owner must relocate an existing traffic sign so that it is located a minimum of a meter from the edge of the proposed driveway. So uh, you yeah, have I, read I think that report? That's all, I, I have read that, and I think that's all pretty straightforward. Okay. All right, then. If you want to make modifications to your variances, I suggest we, we do that at the beginning before you make a... Any further presentation? Okay, I think I'm happy to accept all of those uh, modifications one through five, which are in the staff report. Can you do me a favor, reflected. sir? Can you go through each one of those and tell us which ones you want to change? Yeah, sure. We're eliminating variant six regarding the third story platform. Okay, so six is deleted. Seven, where the side yard setback is being increased to 1.34 meters is what we're asking for instead of 1.21 meters. Hang on just a moment. Variance number seven goes from 1.21 meters to 1.34. That's correct. Okay, number, what's the next one? Variance number eight, the side yard setback is increased from 1.21 to 1.4. Okay, so it's going from 1.21 meters to 1.4. Mm hmm Variances 8, 9, and 11. Hang on just a second. You just, just as you said, variance number 8 is being changed from 1.21 meters to 1.4 meters. That's correct. Okay, so what's the next one? The next one is variances 9, 10, and 11. Uh, and those were 
basically technical variances for the side yard setback to the, the second story platform, those are being eliminated. Nine, 10, and 11 are all being eliminated. Nine, 10, and 11 are eliminated? That's correct. Okay, nine, 10, and 11 are deleted. What's next? Uh, number 12, the building height uh, variance. Instead of 10.63 meters, we're going to ask for 10.5 meters. Okay. Uh, with respect to the anything else? Um, yes, yeah, city staff had recommended reducing the floor space index uh, to below 0.55. Um, because we've made the building narrower, it's going to be actually, instead of 0 0.62, it's going to be 0 four that's variance three is going to be 0 0.614 okay hang on so var variance number three is being modified so the floor space index goes from 0 0.62 to 0 0.614 that's correct okay. and I, i'm gonna i'll say this at the end it's not a change to the variance but i'm i'm basically at the end of this i'm going to suggest that the committee put another condition on the decision, and that's that the floor space index of the ground and second floors be limited to 0 0.55. And that's saying that the ground and second floor floors can be limited to the FSI that planning has suggested here. Uh, and there is a attic floor, uh, and that's where this additional floor area is located. So I, I did submit some presentation material to the committee Maybe we can bring that up and I can explain why this small additional floor area increase is appropriate. And I think as staff is looking for that, I'll mention to the members of the committee that the homeowners have been residents of this area for a long time and they've reached out to all the neighbors. And so the neighbors to both immediate sides as well as the neighbor immediately behind the property have all submitted letters of support to the committee as well as one neighbor two doors over at 109 Dollish, and then two other neighbors across the street of Dollish have submitted letters of support. So staff has basically said that the massing of this building, now that we've made these changes, is appropriate and in keeping. The neighbors are in support. So I think the real one real question before the committee here is, is this space in the attic, this floor space index, which changes the FSI from 0.55 Point six one four is that appropriate or not? So taking a look at this uh, first page, I don't know if it can be made any bigger. But you can see basically what we've got is a two-story building with a pitched roof. That uh, top of that gable, if this image could be blown up to the show the whole first page, top of that gable is a foot below the gable of the existing house, and it's a foot below the gable of 121, the house immediately to the left. So this type of house is exactly in keeping with the neighborhood and it's exactly what the zoning bylaw is looking for. The next page shows the site plan. Basically what you'll see on the site plan going to the next page is that the front of the building and the back of the building align with the existing house. And it's you know kind of in line with the two houses to either side, a little bit less the 121. We could go to the site plan, yeah. But both of those neighbors that you see there, as well as the neighbor immediately behind, are in support. So the question before us, as you'll remember, is whether the extra floor area in this attic is in keeping with the neighborhood and whether it's appropriate. Well, the next page, you'll, take a, you'll see the area that we're showing in the attic and the area that the committee approved at 109 Dollish. If we could go to the next page, please the area that the committee approved at $109 just a few years ago. So $109, two doors away, was approved with an FSI of 0 0.6297, so a little bit more than what we're looking at, with an attic almost exactly the same. And like them, our attic, basically, it doesn't appear in the front, it doesn't appear at the sides, it only appears as a small balcony at the rear of the building. And that balcony is necessary for code reasons, it's necessary to have for egress. Um, so this, this, this is the floor space we're looking at. That balcony, of course, it's needed for code. It's quiet and on an office for only a quiet occasional use. 
having an office space here separate from the rest of the Sir, house. Sir, can you summarize, please? Program. Yeah, this is an important programmatic feature for the homeowner. If you go to the next page, you can see a view of the back of the house. You can see that's the existing house in the photo and $121 beside it. You can see there's extensive screening between these lots so that balcony doesn't uh, pose any overlook. And you can just see this is where the, this is the only spot on the exterior of the building where you can see that third floor. We're asking for this very small increase in the allowable Sir, can you summarize? What staff. Yeah, so I think I have summarized. So I'm happy to take some questions from the committee. On this page Thank here, you. you'll see a lot of Thank similar you. buildings in the neighborhood. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Please note that we have uh, no other persons registered to speak on this on this application. Uh, if that being the case, if I could get a motion on this revised application, please. I'll just go through the revisions again. My apologies, committee. This is a lengthy one. Uh, the applicant has changed revised variance number three, so that the Proposed floor space index is point zero point six two times the area of the lot. He's revised that from zero point six two to zero point six one four. Variance number six relating to the proposed area of the third floor balcony has been deleted. Variance number seven, the proposed west side yard setback is one point two one meters. That has been increased to one point three four meters. Variance number eight. The proposed ECI side yard setback is 1.21 meters. That has been increased to 1.4 meters. Variances number 9, 10, and 11 are deleted. Variance number 12, the proposed height of the building is 10.63 meters, has been changed to 10.5 meters. So if I could get a motion on that revised application, please. Yes, Mr. 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 Chairman. Mr. Kahn. Thank you, sir. I, uh, very kind of you. Uh, taking this staff recommendation, uh, the changes already have been mentioned by you. I'm not going to repeat them, but I'm repeating uh, the motion uh, recommended by the staff. Dwelling shall have a maximum length of 20.69 meters in addition to the rear excavated ground floor platform for a total, total building length of 25.3 meters as seen on the site plan drawings attached to this report. Number two, the driveway be substantially developed in accordance with the site plan drawings attached to this report. And three, a proposed proposal be developed substantially in accordance with building and exterior wall height as seen on the front rear and side elevation attached to this report. And number four, also there are one, two, three conditions set forth by the transport services as been as recommended by them. That should be Mr. complied Khan. with. Okay, someone to second you, Mr. Khan's motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Ms. Sankar. In favor. Mr. Hunt, you're in favor? Yes. Ms. Sankar, I've listed your video feed. If I could get a, a, a yay or a nay. Ms. Sankar? We have enough for quorum anyway. That, that motion carries. Sir, your application has been approved subject to city planning and transportation services. Your revised application has been approved subject to city planning and transportation services conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Committee. Item number 37. 388 Elm Road. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, My name is Barry Goldman. I'm the architect and the agent for this application. Sir, could I get, uh, thank you. 
I wanted to ask, have you had the opportunity to uh, read the Transportation Services Report of the 12th of November? They have no objection to your application, provided that you put a notation on the site plan drawing state, stating that all portions of existing site access driveways that are no longer required must be closed and restored with soft landscaping and full concrete curbs to the satisfaction of Transportation Services. Have you read that report? Yes, I've read the report. We have no problem complying with Okay, that. thank you, sir. I have uh, two other people who want to speak on this application. So if you could give us a uh, brief presentation on what you see are the merits of your proposal. Certainly. Uh, we're asking for a total of five uh, minor variances to the zoning bylaw. Uh, two of them are technical and uh, unless the committee has questions, I won't address them. Uh, first one, sidewall height. I'd like to point out, we're not asking for a height variance. Uh, and I should add, we, we would like to reduce the sidewall height variance to nine meters, 9.0 meters. Sir, can you just tell me which variance number that is? That is variance number one. Okay, so you're proposing to change variance number one, which currently reads the proposed height of the side exterior main walls facing side lot line is 9.44 meters. What do you want to change that to? I'd like to change that to 9.0, 9 meters even. Okay, so, okay, so okay. you're proposing to change it from 9.44 to 9 meters. That's correct. Variance number one. Okay, that's fine. Are there any more changes? No, that's the only change we're proposing. Okay, thank you, sir. If you could proceed then. Certainly. <clears throat> uh, so I'd like to point out we are not asking for a height variance. The building roof line is set below the 10 meter maximum height permitted. We're asking for a sidewall height variance to permit a parapet style roof for aesthetic reasons. I'd ask the committee to consider that we could substitute a mansard style roof and come in as of right with the massing virtually unchanged. In other words, the building massing is permitted under the existing bylaws. It's simply that we'd like to use a brick wall with a parapet and a flat roof similar to the new house directly across the street at 391L. Additionally, across the street, 395L, which does have a mansard roof, received a height variance of 10.2 meters and a sidewall height of 9.06. Our building massing would be 0.76 meters below that. Other examples on the street whose massing is higher than our proposals are 291L with a height of 10.39, 295 elm with a height of 10.2 meters, 296 elm with a height of 10.76 meters, 297 elm with a height of 10.71 meters. So to conclude, the variance is minor and in keeping with the adjacent houses. Uh, variance number two, which is FSI, we've spoken to planning staff and planning staff are comfortable with the proposed FSI. Uh, Again, while we've provided you with a, a fairly comprehensive list of decisions that support this, I'd like to point out the following addresses because they're very close to the subject property. 360 Elm, FSI awarded 0.85. 391 Elm, FSI awarded 0.87. 373 Elm, FSI awarded 0.85. 376 Elm, FSI of 0.87. 291 Elm, 0.89, 295 Elm, 0.89, 298 Elm, 0.95. Finally, building depth. The maximum permitted building depth is 17 meters. We're in, we are asking for an extra 0.45 meters for the southern half of the wall. After meeting with the neighbors to the north at 390 Elm and discussing their concerns, and despite their continued objection, we modified the design to have half of the rear facade adjacent to their property to be constructed as of right at 17 meters and the half further away from them to maintain the 17.45 meters proposed. We're asking for an increase of about 2.5% beyond the maximum permitted for 50% of the rear wall. Additionally, one more example, 396L was awarded a building length of 19.22. So to conclude, I'd suggest that the variances we're proposing are, are minor and in keeping with decisions that have been awarded recently. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? 
Mr. Khan. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Goldman, you are an architect. Yes. And you understand that there are four tests any application has to meet and qualify for approval. My question is variance number two, uh, which is a floor space index. You are asking 0 0.86, which is restricted to 0 .0, uh, 0.6. I mean, as an architect, you know that it is not meeting the criteria uh, of the uh, uh, zoning bylaw. Now, how can you claim that 0 0.86 is justified? Thank you for the question, sir. Uh, I'd suggest similar to when a person gets onto a highway uh, and they see all the other cars are going at 130, they feel it's acceptable to, to join them. Uh, if, you know, within 50 meters of our house, 360 Elm was awarded 0.85, 391 Elm was awarded 0.87, 373 Elm was awarded 0.85, 376 Elm was awarded 0.87, 291 Elm was awarded 0.89, 295 Elm was awarded 0.89. So I'd suggest that's the context that I'm responding to. Uh, none of those, the, Mr. I'm responding to the context of the built form in the neighborhood. Mr. Goldman, can I interject here, please? Please, go ahead. Thank you kindly. Sir, you are giving me example of the traffic on the highway. The cop deals only with the motor or vehicle he, he catches, uh, breaking the uh, rule, not the other one who has already passed or will be passing later, much higher or whatever. So my question is with you, I'm dealing with your case, sir, not anybody else. So you have to justify your case why you want 0 0.086. That is way, way up. Sir, uh, Mr. Khan, what, what is the question? Sir, my question is he has to justify that 0.86 is way high okay, uh, of the flow center. He, I think he's already explained that. Do you have another question for him? Uh, that, that is the one I, I am not satisfied. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll go to the, our next registered speaker. I'm looking for Lisa Darcy. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Ms. Darcy, can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, it's Lisa Darcy, and I'm at 390 Elm Road. Okay, the thank property you. property just north. Can you give us your uh, comments on the application? Yes, um, we, we did meet with the architect uh, a week or so ago to look at the plans. At the time, uh, we, we didn't have as much information available to us as we do now and understand uh, what, what had been done in the neighborhood and uh, also understanding what type of criteria and conditions the committee assesses. Um, and hearing all of the presentations today, I see there is a tremendous amount of uh, uh, thought into keeping with the neighborhood. So I would say this property itself is is not that the neighborhood is considered our uh, very uh, small uh, quaint block at uh, uh, in our vicinity. So we uh, actually have one house north of us at 392 Elm and uh, two houses south. And this one here would definitely be uh, not in keeping with the block. We have a, a new build that is underway at 386 Elm Road. And although that, that build is much larger than our traditional two-story home, um, which we've undergone some very nice renovations this year, we love our property. It's somewhat bittersweet that we will never achieve the footprint of these newer homes and uh, our, our view and landscape will definitely be blocked. We, we are prepared for that. We understand the benefits of development. We're excited that there's a new property going next door. Um, all that said, though, um, I heard another speaker mention this earlier on, that it's the combination of variances for us that concerns us. Um, the, the combination to us just speaks to a design that's looking for a bigger place to exist, to be honest. Like, how much can we pierce the limits of every variance and every precedent to get as much square footage as we can in return on our investment? And that concerns us. Um, we're not, uh, we, we've not... Um, met any acquaintance with the owners. Uh, we have no reason to believe they'll be living in the home or raising a family. 
Um, so for us to just see a massive structure built next to us, um, that's not in keeping to the block. Um, we will have uh, a three and a half meter blockage on our deck. So as we head in to enjoy the afternoon sunshine, uh, we will not have sunlight on the deck anymore uh, for the better part of the day. Um, we're graced with a red brick building in back of us to the west, which blocks the sun for the rest of the day. Um, so it, it's starting to feel very, very suffocating. Um, our house is at 14 meters and um, essentially this, this will be very, very constraining. I know their length is, uh, you know, you're allowed to go to 17 meters, but uh, well, why go to 7.45? <laughs> 17 is already, is already large. And then when you add the culmination of the FSI, there's not even a reason to go to 17. Again, we're piercing the limits of an FSI. Um, we quote a house across the street that's at the similar FSI, but yet it doesn't pierce through the 17 meter zone, the 391 Elm Road. So it, it's like this house has looked at the best of each combination to put it all together to build a massive structure. Um, I appreciate the concession that they've made on the height. Um, we will be uh, three feet away from this house and we have a window south facing that will be greatly affected by um, a second story house. No matter what, we will be affected, but every, every inch, every meter counts here in this instance. And if they were to stay with the zoning variance, the, the zoning code at 7.5 for a wall and then have a nice little slope, we would have a bit of sunshine coming in between the houses. And again, for a parapet that uh, does not add much uh, to the style of the house when it's between two homes three, three feet apart. Um, there's a house at 51 row that has done a wonderful job with a parapet at the front and has still managed to stay within the uh, city bylaws. We we're in the same area. Adam, can you summarize, and, and please? Put, yep, they put the walls at 7.5 with the slope. So we've shared our letter and uh, we, we are opposed to the constructions as it is. is. We we're open to working with them, but we didn't hear back. Okay, thank you. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, uh, we have one more speaker registered. I have a Ran Za. Are you there? No, no, Ranza is not there. Go back to Mr. Goldman. Mr. Goldman, are you there? Yes, I'm here, sir. You have the opportunity to address the concerns raised by Ms. Darcy. Uh, yes, uh, I'll point out that uh, we did remove the parapet uh, from the, the wall to reduce the height on the side walls. And we did jog the wall, our rear wall, to bring it to 17 meters for the, the half of the house that's adjacent to their property. So we did modify our design as best we could to, to suit their requirements. Uh, and again, I'd just like to reiterate that we could go with a mansard roof that would comply with the zoning bylaw and yet have the same massing. So what we're really talking about here is an aesthetic consideration. Uh, an as of right house would have the same impact on the adjacent property as the house that we're proposing here. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go back to, we have no other speakers registered and I note that uh, we have no conditions from staff other than from transportation services in their 12th of November report. So if I could get a motion on this revised application, Please note that variance number one has been changed. The applicant has changed the uh, variance number one to read the proposed height of the side exterior main walls facing side lot line is 9.44 meters. That has been reduced from 9.44 meters to 9.0 meters. So if I could get a motion on this revised application, please. Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, having listened to both sides uh, uh, discuss the application, I am persuaded by the agent that uh, uh, the revised application is, uh, is uh, reasonable for the, uh, for the neighborhood uh, and uh, is of uh, a minor nature, I'd like to put forward uh, uh, a motion to accept the revised application 
um, amended uh, variance one amended to uh, read the proposed height of the side exterior main walls facing a lot line uh, is 9.0 meters and subject to the transportation services uh, condition that uh, um, uh, 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 notation is to be added to the site plan drawing stating that all portions of the existing site access driveways that are no longer required must be closed, restored with soft landscaping and full concrete curbs to the satisfaction of the transportation services. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second Mr. Kidd's motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Mr. Hunter, are you in favor? Yes, yeah, no, I'm opposed. Okay, so uh, we, uh, who, anyone else opposed to that? Mr. Khan is opposed. We have a tie. I will support Mr. Kidd's motion. I think what the applicant's proposing here is good for the neighborhood and certainly uh, will bring value in certainly increase the, uh, the livability of the neighborhood. So I'll, I'll uh, support Mr. Kidd's motion. So that motion passes, uh, subject to transportation services condition. Okay, we're now on item Thank number you. 38, 112 Dell Park Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That's a Sarah Ifra, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, Ms. Ifra, could I get your full name and address, please? Yeah, Sarah Ifra, 75 Dufflaw Road, M6A, 2W4. Okay, thank you, madam. I note that uh, there were, uh, was, there was a, uh, there were recommended, recommended conditions from urban forestry and transportation services had a report of November 9th. They had no objections to your proposal. Uh, we have, it's very clear what you're asking for in the variances before us. We have no other people registered to speak on the application. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or if it would like a uh, presentation. Being none, could I get a motion on the application, please? Mr. Kidd. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, in my view, the requested variances are minor in nature and appropriate for the neighborhood. I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application subject to um, transportation services. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, no, uh, subject to forestry condition only. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second that motion? Sankar second. second. All those in favor? In favor. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Mr. Khan, are you in favor or opposed? Mr. Kit, Mr. Khan dissenting. That motion carries. Uh, Ms. Ifra, your application has been approved subject to uh, urban forestry conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 39. 273 Cranbrook Avenue. We have right, one, two people registered to speak. The agent is an Alex Axelrod. Are you there? Mr. Axelrod, are you there? Uh, Mr. Chair, we've been advised that a Reiner Hoyer will be acting as agent. Okay, thank you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Reiner Hoyer. Can I get your full name and address, please? 109 Alfred Avenue. Okay, thank you, sir. I wanted to ask, have you had the opportunity to read the city planning report of the 27th of October? They indicate that they have uh, no yeah. objection to your application, provided that, uh, you're, that your client provides permanent opaque screening or fencing along the west edge of the proposed rear deck with a minimum height of 1.5 meters from the floor of the platforms. Have you seen that report, sir? Yes. Okay, we, thank are, you. we are trying to comply with it. Okay, thank you, sir. If you could give the uh, committee a uh, brief presentation on what you see are the merits of your proposal, please. So basically our proposal is identical to the new house of 275, except that we are keeping the main house and adding a small two-story addition. 
and a secondary suite in the basement. Uh, the existing garage is kind of cutting into the backyard green space and we're seeking the grants for that. Uh, the rest of it is more or less existing conditions, the front, because we're doing the basement apartment and the rest is uh, we will comply you know, with the neighborhood to fit between two uh, rebuilt houses just to match the existing character. And thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next person registered to speak. I have an Alex Sunerich. Are you there, sir? I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. Can I get your full name and address, please? Nadine, N-A-D-I-N-E, Sunerich, S-U-N-A-R-I-C-H. Thank you. Can uh, you please give us your thoughts on this application? Um, we are the neighbor to the east, and we wanted to know what was happening with the garage. Well, we'll uh, we can we can ask the uh, I'll ask the agent. Okay, is that your only question? Um, as well, when were they thinking of beginning construction? Well, we will ask the agent, and he'll respond. Okay. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay, thank you, sir. You heard uh, you heard the comments from your neighbor. Can you respond to them, please? Yes, the existing garage we plan to keep and re-renovate. Re and the uh, construction start will depend on when we receive the final building permit, probably within you know, two months from today. Okay, thank you. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, we have no other persons registered to speak. And uh, we only have that recommended condition from city planning. So could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sanker. Okay, through you, Mr. Chair, I, I'll motion. I do believe that this is um, a minor and does meet the four tests. I'll put forward a motion to approve this application and I'll make it subject to the October 27th um staff report in that the applicant provide permanent opaque screening or fencing along the west edge of the proposed rear deck with a minimum height of 1.5 meters thank you miss sankar someone to second that motion so so second mr hunt seconds all those in favor opposed mr khan dissenting that motion carries sir your application has been approved subject to city planning conditions Thank you very much. Thank you. For, uh, ne item number 40, 471 Coldstream Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That is the agent, Sarah Ifra. Are you there? I am. Okay, Ms. R Ms. Ifra, I just wanted to ask, uh, <clears throat> there's a report. I'll just see if you've read these two reports. There's a report from city planning dated the 27th of October indicating that they had no objection to your application, provided that the property is developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and west side elevation drawings, and that the lot coverage of the dwelling be limited to 38.4% and the remaining 5.23% of the lot coverage be allocated towards the platform. There's also a report from Transportation Service dated November 10th, and they're recommending that your application be refused because your driveway is too wide. Now, have you read both those reports? I have. Okay, uh, would you like to respond to, uh, I think you may want to give us a response with respect to uh, the transportation services one. It seems like city planning has no issues, but you may want to make some comments with respect to the transportation services comments. Yes, exactly. With the staff report 100%, I'm in agreement. We worked together on that one. Um, for the transportation one, um, they, I, I think part of that report did make mention in the city boulevard. So I don't mind to say, you know, past our property line that we narrow to the six meters, but the 6.2 that we're requesting is considerably narrower than what there is right now. Um, and they are a large family, uh, a two car family. It's very difficult to get a two car garage now on these lots that are a little bit narrower. 
Um, so we are looking to provide a bit of a space so that you don't have that car jockey all the time. Um, but again, in reviewing the site plan, the driveway that existed, the driveway that we needed um, in terms of for the client, we looked at it and we and we judged it where there would be a lot more, bless you, a lot more green space um, while we were still asking for this, you know, this number of 6.2, which, you know, you might see on a house that has a, a two car garage, but really it's just for the function of being able to park in the garage, park another car a little bit to the side um, and still have space to kind of get in and out. Um, but again, very similar to what exists there today, actually improving the condition. Um, yeah, I, I was just going to add, I, when I was up to take a look at the property, I, I noticed there are actually quite a few driveways on this street that are of similar dimension. Am I correct? Exactly, yes. Okay, so this, yep. this yep. is re really not that out of the ordinary. No. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Uh, there being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for explaining that you've been there and it seems to be the character of the neighborhood. That's very helpful. So what I'll do is I'll make a motion to approve this application. I do believe it meets the four tests. I'm going to make it subject to the staff report for which the agent said she had no concerns about it, and that will be subject to the October 27th staff report that the property be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and west side elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustments and that the lot coverage um, be limited to 38.40% and the remaining 5.23% of the lot coverage will be allocated towards the platform and uh, it'll be subject to forestry. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion? Hunt seconds. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Madam, your application has been unanimously approved subject to city planning and urban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 41, 55 Canarctic Drive. I have one person registered to speak. That's Dennis Wood. Uh, Mr. Wood, are you there? I am, sir. I am uh, legal counsel for the applicant. Okay, um, thank you. I, thank you, Mr. Wood. I note that uh, we have no staff comments or recommended conditions on this application. It's very clear what you're asking for, a very uh, uh, increase in the floor space index from 1.0 to 1.02. Uh, very clear what you're asking for. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or it would like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's a minor uh, vari variation, so I would like to move it to be approved. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Someone to second Mr. Khan's motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Mr. Hunter, are you in favor? I am, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. That motion carries unanimous, unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 42, to Tufton Crescent. Uh, I have one person registered to speak, David Stickney. Is the, uh, are you there? I am, sir. Yes, Mr. Stickney, could I get your full name and address, please? Yes, David Stickney, 149 Lowther Avenue, Toronto, M5R 3M5. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, the only recent uh, comments we have on this application are from Transportation Services dated the 12th of November. They had no objections to the application since the driveway to Elvestone is proposed to be closed and restored with landscaping. Uh, it looks like there was a report from city planning dated the, four, dating the, dated the 14th of October, but it appears that uh, these comments haven't been re revised to reflect the current site drawing where you've uh, closed the Elvestone drawing, uh, the Elvestone driveway. So I think those, those comments are obsolete. And the only ones that stand right now are the transportation services comments. Am I correct, sir? Correct. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, there is no one else registered to speak on this application, and uh, I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments or would like a presentation. Mr. Khan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Stickney, variance number two. Would you kindly explain why you need such a large platform, 20.18 meters square, while the allowable is only four meters square? Sir, did you get that question? Mr. Khan's asking about uh, yes, variance sir. number um, two, the justification. Yes. Um, the, 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 uh, the deck itself is, is a ground level deck at the rear of the property. If, if you've been to the property, the, the rear yard is almost a full story higher than the, than the front yard. So by taking the established grade at the main front wall, the basement is actually rated as the ground floor by definition. Ergo, the, the deck at the back, which is only a few feet above the rear yard, is deemed to be a second story deck. If, it were, if, if there were a higher grade at the front of the building, uh, the, the deck would be totally legal because it's, it's less than four feet established above the rear yard adjacent grade. So it's, to me, it's a it's it's an, um, a definitional thing. The deck itself is is what you want in a backyard, a few feet off the off the grass, but by definition of the zoning bylaw, it's deemed to be a second story deck. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Mr. Khan. Did you get get your question answered? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan? Sir, after listening to the explanation, I think I'm convinced that this is a minor variation, variance, and it should be approved. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Kidd so seconds. Second. All those in favor? Mr. Hunter? In favor. And you're in favor? In Thank favor. you, sir. That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application's been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you very much. Thank Can you, I get Mr. a motion Chairman to terminate, folks? Motion to terminate. Thank you, sir. You guys have been great. Thank Thanks you very everybody. much. Thanks for your patience. We'll see you guys next <laughs> week. Have a good weekend.